My name is Janelle Riley. Welcome to this Inside the Writer's Room with Abbott Elementary. Please join me in welcoming today's guests, some of the creative minds behind the most acclaimed new show of the season. We have creator, executive producer, and star Quinta Brunson. Hello. Co-EP Brian Rubenstein. Hello. Producer Jordan Temple. Executive story editor Brittany Nichols. And staff writers Joya McCrory. Kate Peter, <laughs> and Justin Tan. Thank you all so much for being here. Again, congratulations on a fantastic series. Um, so excited for the second season. So excited for all the acclaim it's received. I would love to go back to the beginning and ask um, each of you sort of when you first fell in love with writing or what was the first thing you wrote where you sort of felt like you could call yourself a writer, um, whether you got paid for it or it's just when you realized that's this is everything, this is what you wanted to do. Um, let's start with Joya because she happens to be next to me in my box. Um, I wrote a story in the second grade about aliens attacking my school and it won some sort of prize. Um, and so I decided from that point on, I would be some form of, of a writer. So I got an early start. What kind of prize? Was it like a school prize or? A school prize, but I don't think I ever saw anything that came of it. So they just told me I won something and I didn't get anything. But shout out to Detroit Public Schools. That's how they roll. <laughs> and it prepared you well for the industry. Yes. <laughs> Brittany, what about for you? I was on Tumblr and I saw a community writer. I think it was Megan Gans or someone uh, say that writing and being nerdy was a job and that job was television writing and that had not occurred to me prior to that point uh and that sort of put some things in motion uh and I decided to move to LA after that your kid have you met or worked with Megan Gans at this point no okay uh, that's I hope that they hear this that they that they know that they inspired someone I'm sure she probably out. inspired a bunch of people <laughs> Well, it worked out really well in your case. So that's the good news. <laughs> Brian, what about for you? Uh, yeah, I always watched like way too much TV uh, growing up and was just like a big comedy fan, but I didn't understand that writing it was a job. So like as a kid, if I had known it was a job, that's probably what I would have focused on. But it wasn't until I got to college that I understood that there were people actually doing this and then I started reading books about it and got excited and just started writing a lot and uh yeah that's how I got into it do you remember the first thing you ever wrote professionally professionally well uh yeah I I guess it was I got this assistant job at E! Entertainment Television. And uh, they had this show called Celebrities Uncensored. And I started writing that show. And I was strangely good at it. And it was like an hour long. It was wall to wall voiceover. And I would write an hour long episode like, you know, once a week. Wow. <laughs> Who are some of the uncensored celebrities you wrote about? Uh, Paris Hilton was big and uh, Brittany, of course. Um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was crazy. Wow. Justin, what about for you? Um, I think the first thing that I wrote that I thought was like passable as a piece of writing was um, a sketch I wrote in college. Uh, uh, and then from there, I was like, oh, I, I, I like this. I understand kind of like um, the structure and the format uh, of sketches and then I think when I felt like kind of um like maybe more a little more legit was when um I started making internet videos that were sketches in sketch form um that people watched um and yeah was there one particular sketch that sort of took off for you in your opinion that That's we might now. know um um i don't know i did a I did a a series of like fake trailers online um one one that started off with uh quinta we it was about uh it was like done in a like a horror movie way um about like people getting getting married and stuff like our friends getting married um it's called wedding season if you yeah <laughs> uh, oh my god i hope it's still out there because i need to see uh, it it is it is <laughs> <laughs> kate what about for you 
Uh, yeah, I think when I was in high school, I had this creative writing teacher. We got to take like electives and I had creative writing and he was like a known asshole. He didn't pull any punches with kids and uh, had really honest, uh, mean feedback. But when we did this section and he like tore my poetry apart. But when we got to, uh, uh, we had to do like a monologue, a, a scene, like a two person scene, a, a, a group scene, all of this sort of stuff. Uh, he was like, this is like very funny. I've laughed the whole time. And I was like, from him, from someone who was so mean, uh, that really meant a lot to me. And I was like, oh, okay. I hadn't thought of it like that. I just took that elective because it seemed easy. Uh, and it was not, uh, but yeah, that was it. And again, probably prepared you really well for Hollywood. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Someone with harsh feedback. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan, what about for you? Um, when I was a kid, I would like uh do cat I would like trace Captain Underpants, like comic, like the books, uh by Dave Pilkey. And then I would like put my own captions because I wasn't like very confident in my drawing ability until I like gained enough confidence to kind of do it on my own my mom like called me one day because she saw a light under the door I was like acting like I go to bed and then I break them out and then like writing my own captions and selling them like the characters George and Harold in the book was always cool to me and then um like I did stand up for a while and I like wrote a play that was like a writing sample for me called Hidden Fences which was a mashup of the viral mistake that they made where I actually played in it and I actually like I uh, had it produced by a friend of mine and uh, it was like uh, Troy from Fences who I played. He's like the first black man to hit a who wants to hit a baseball in the space. And then the hidden figures do the math to help get it there. So I just did like that. And it was like, it was like really fun to put on and stuff. So yeah, that's, yeah. And am I correct that you're the person who came up with the hat that you and Brittany are wearing? Yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah. everyone um, in the writer's room on the days where we have, you know, a table reader or something, you know, okay. we're just like goofing off. We all wear this hat, you know. Please, please make those merchandise so that I can get one. Those are amazing. <laughs> it's just writer's room merchandise, not from <laughs> completely separate entity. <laughs> <laughs> As, as a journalist, mine should say headline to come because I can never, I'm not good with puns and I can never do headlines. So people have to fill them in for me. But, oh, uh, someone asked actually, can we see the hat a little better? Just so it says joke to come. With a, with a K. <laughs> That's amazing. And Quinta, what about for you? Um, for me, I was definitely more into the performance aspect of comedy first. And uh, I think honestly was a little bit afraid of writing, but I took an improv class at Second City in Chicago. Uh, it was them just having the winter classes. So I went out on my uh, school break and I had a teacher there named Shelly Gossman, who honestly told me, she was like, you need to get into writing. I think you have the sensibility to get into the writing side of comedy as well. Before that, I hadn't thought about it that much. Um, I think I enjoyed writing. I enjoyed creative writing in school. I love storytelling, but I didn't see the path of TV writer. When she enc encouraged me to take a writing course, that was the turning point where I felt that I had really good sensibilities in that area. And it made me realize that that was gonna be the focus of my career. Um, I actually have a question here about your career. And for anyone in the audience who wants to ask a question, please use the Q&A box and I'll try to get through as many as possible. Um, but Liz actually w pointed out that you're someone who came from BuzzFeed and she was wondering, what would you suggest as a way to move towards doing scripted? Did you have representation when you were at BuzzFeed? Do you feel that there's a growth on the studio side that clears uh, at BuzzFeed that clears a pathway for narrative writers? Um, no, I, I, I mean, especially not now. I don't think BuzzFeed is like much of anything currently. Um, uh, uh, if I'm being honest, like it's not what it was when I was there or Justin or Kate, a lot of us worked there. Brittany did at a point too, but like at the time BuzzFeed was just another stage. That's the way I describe it. Um, before BuzzFeed, I was already doing comedy. I was doing stand-up. Um, I met Justin through stand-up and 
got the job through Justin because I just needed a job. But I did look at it as another outlet to write and perform. And I just think wherever you can find that kind of an outlet, you should take advantage of it. Um, for a while before BuzzFeed, it was just like straight up YouTube. Like people were finding another stage in YouTube. I guess now that stage would be TikTok, but I think the key is to make sure that you are practicing writing and comedy in all its forms outside of just, you know, I guess controversial opinion, but I don't think you should just be a TikToker. I think you should be practicing writing. You should have a love of comedy, love of the craft. And if anything, use that as one of your um, one of your outlets, the same way a stand-up uses a stage to do stand-up or someone who's, you know, writing a television show can also write a movie should they learn how to, you know, write a movie script. So, yeah. I really hope that's not a controversial opinion because I couldn't agree more. It seems <laughs> like it. I feel like whenever I say it, people don't believe me and they think I'm blowing smoke, but BuzzFeed was truly just, for me, a job. It was like, here's this place where I get to get paid, but also refine my writing, do some work, share work with the world. So you know, I think people think that's bullshit, but it's not. <laughs> Actually, Jordan, may I ask, when you did Hidden Fences, um, was that just something you uploaded to YouTube? I didn't know if it was, you know, sponsored. Oh, no, it was like a live play. It was a live play. I did okay. it maybe 10 times between mostly in New York, also for New York Comedy Festival, and then a couple times in LA. Oh, so you never did a film version of it? No. Oh, wow. I mean, I, I have guess the script. I actually lost the recording, sadly. But oh. yeah, I have I have the script. I've like probably edited about 20 times. It's always like topical jokes always put in there, kind of. I love that even more because I love hearing how theater can translate into audiences. Um, so this brings everyone to Abbott Elementary. And I, I want to start at the beginning with Quinta, as you've been very open about this show being incredibly personal to you. How did you first develop the idea behind the show? And, and what was the process of developing and pitching it like? When did everyone here sort of get involved? Here we go. So I had the idea for the show after kind of um, spending some time with my mother, who was on the verge of retirement. And uh, I spent some time with her at her school. And it all just kind of came to me. I had been watching her do her job for years. But for some reason, it just looked a little bit different to me at that time. And I saw a show in it. And I decided to follow that instinct and try to develop it. So uh, Justin who aren't, they're not here with us today, but Justin Halpern and Patrick Schumacher, they are producers who I'd worked with before. They produced a pilot I was in that they casted me in for the CW. Although that pilot never went to air, I really enjoyed working on that show. And I enjoyed those two as producers because they were cast me in a role that was not meant for a black actress. And when I got the role, it became a lot about um, me helping the lines be a little bit more you know, unique to me. So took the idea to them, honestly thought of it as a cartoon because I was working on another project for CBS at the time with Larry Wilmore and Jermaine Fowler that was gonna be live action. And I thought if this was a cartoon, it might be easier for me to, to manage. And then after that, about two to three years passed by. A couple of things happened in between that time. Black Lady Sketch Show, I had been casted on another show, Miracle Workers. I had sold another pilot to HBO Max that didn't go but was developing with them. But then I saw Patrick on the Warner Brothers lot after a meeting and he kind of brought the idea back up. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm still into that. And this was right before the pandemic hit. So the pandemic hit and we kind of were like, well, let's still develop it and see what happens. They had a great relationship with Warner Brothers. I had a good relationship with Warner Brothers. We developed the idea into a live action show, took it to our people at WB, they loved it. From that point on, we then, you know, developed the pitch a little bit further and then pitched it to the different networks. Um, I guess it's okay to talk about now, but like it, it was bought by CBS, it was bought by Fox, and it was bought by NBC. But ABC, we knew we wanted to go there with this show because there was a woman named Erin Warnberg there who I really wanted to work with because I pitched to her the previous summer. And although the show I had before wasn't right for ABC at the time, I knew that she, 
she, you know, if I was going to do something else, I'd love to take it to ABC and work with her on making a show for the masses. And so she also had helped start Justin and Patrick's career. So it was very kismet that Aaron had made the jump from WB to ABC and we all knew her, liked her. The ABC bought it after that. We, what happens after that? I wrote the pilot. And, uh, and then after I wrote the pilot, they then picked up the pilot to film. And we shot the pilot, which involved casting all the actors, getting a team together, you know, for the production. Then it was the harrowing moment of waiting to see whether or not they would pick it up to series. And they did, which was amazing. And from that point on, we interviewed writers. And um, that was the part that was really important to me because I didn't just want funny people or um, people who fit, a, who checked a certain box. I wanted people who I really felt knew the soul of the show. And it was wonderful because we had the pilot to show them. And everyone you see here today, and even people who aren't here, they understood what we were doing and also brought a unique perspective to it. Like, uh, like for instance, Brian, <laughs> to put your business out there a little bit, but <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I was like a little like, I don't know what this man is going to bring to Abby. And I, was like, well, I didn't, but he, he had the, the, Brian not only is an, an incredible writer and has a great knowledge of how to make a network show, but he also told us about his wife who works in hospitals. And it's a very similar experience to what you experience in a, in a public school situation, you know, publicly funded hospitals. And Brittany, although I've known Brittany as a writer and loved her work, Brittany also wrote on Black Lady Sketch Show. It still was, uh, Brittany had kind of like the outside look at the political realm of why public schools tick the way they do, as well as being funny. Everyone here is super funny, but everyone bought something really unique to the table. Um, Joya, for instance, just blew me away because she's I was like so what do you what are your favorite shows or what do you what's your story and she's like I like Family Guy and I like Schitt's Creek and I was like okay I like that about you and then she had a few stories about school that were like really unique in her relationship to public schools and all that being said we got our writers room as you can see they did really amazing work on season one and it felt I love to be a part of a room just as much as I love to, you know, do the other parts of this job. But I also was like, who do I want to spend time in a room with? And um, they're all fantastic. So that was kind of the process. So nobody here was involved in the pilot. You you put this room together after the pilot. Yes. Wow. OK, well, then I would I would love to know from everyone else, you know, what attracted you to this show and, and what did you feel you could bring to it with your own unique voice? Um, and how much did it help to have that pilot to be able to watch that? Because a lot of the times you don't have any kind of an idea sort of what, what a new show is. Um, That's a good question. I want to know too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Brian. Yeah, I, I got an email from my agent who sent me the pilot and he said, you're meeting on this tomorrow. And that's all he said. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything. So I, I watched it uh, that night with my wife and I had actually, and we started watching it and uh, the cold open starts and she's like, that's me. <laughs> I'm Janine, <laughs> like immediately. And, and we watched it. And I mean, it was amazing. Like the pilot is just amazing. And I had literally been sent a couple other pilots in like the week before, not to name their names, but they weren't that great, but this was amazing. And so I made her tell me every story because I she tell, told me these stories every day when she gets home. I'm like, all right, remind me of all those stories again. And she did. And then the next day I met with Quinta and Justin and Pat and I told them how great I thought it was. And then I just started telling them the stories that I was living in, even though, you know, it's a hospital, it's not a school, but, uh, you know, she works in pediatrics. So there was just, a, there was a lot of similarities in the stories that go on. And so I just, I just had all of those and we hit it off and uh, got on the show. And just to clarify the pilot that they watched is the same pilot that we as an audience saw. Yes. 
Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. We got, we were, for, yeah, we filmed the pilot and we were fortunate enough to have that and then show the writers, which I guess doesn't happen all the time. Some, sometimes things are picked up straight to series. Sometimes you don't have it to show to the writers, but we did. And that was, that was, I think, very helpful. I wish I could do that all the time, but I guess, you know, that won't happen all the time. And Jordan, for you, what attracted you to the project? Oh, I just love how black it is and how fun it is. It's so funny. I'm from New York, too. I'm from New York City. So like just Philly and just like East Coast City and energy, it just felt so honest, you know, and I just like relate to all of them in their own specific weird way and being a product of public schools and having someone that's like categorical as Mr. Johnson to just, you know, have like blows to scenes and Ava's own agent of chaos and like you have the vets and the incumbent and then Janine who's holding your hand through it is just every part of it yeah I I, I loved it yeah so it sounds like you were made for this show honestly when I when yeah. I asked what people can bring to it you were you really literally were from New York yeah. you, you 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 understood the show right away yes yeah, you know I smelled those walls too I know you know and just, there's certain things they say yeah, definitely a lot of things yeah just jumped off the page so. Kate what about for you um I had a bit of a different experience I hated this no I'm just kidding um <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no um I Quint is uh, my best friend I don't know if she feels the same but oh, uh, <laughs> um but I was there like I remember being with her on like her porch when she was like I have this idea for this show like when she got the idea after visiting with her mom and going to her mom's school so I was lucky in that way to have literally seen it grow and how it like uh how it became what it got to by the pilot and I mean I've been writing like with Quinta and for Quinta for most of my time out here in Los Angeles, uh, if not all of it. So that's what attracted me to it. That's is, is I'm in a really dream situation. So <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> what do you think is the secret to that collaboration that's been been going on for so long now? Kate is Kate is sillier <laughs> than me, which I think is helpful. Like we're not technically like writing partners or anything, no. but, but we we spend a lot of time together because we're friends. We're we're Kate was literally over my house probably more than anybody in the in the world, and I think it's helpful that Kate is. I think it's part of some of the presence she brings to our show is like she's very silly, and I think I'm not. Uh, but I, I think we appreciate each it. each other's like what we bring to the table because that's how we sort of became friends was our love uh, a mutual love of like 30 rock uh yeah. and the office so i think yeah. it's a yin yang type of the thing at least yeah. in my perspective and justin you also knew quinta prior to coming to the show i believe um so you you already sort of knew her style and approach but what specifically interests you in being a part of this oh i mean i I've been waiting 10 years for Quinta to get a show picked up so she could hire me. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, um, I've, I've also worked and known Quinta for a long time. So uh, we, we have a lot of the same like sensibilities and like sketch and um, telling stories with a certain emotion. Um, and yeah. And Quinta, knowing Justin, what did you think that he brought to the table that no one else could? Um, well, one, one thing was cool because knowing Justin and Kate and even Brittany, who I didn't know as well, it was just like knowing that people would make good collaborators is, is really important to me. Um, and I knew that with Kate, of course, and with Justin, of course, and having seen Brittany in writers' rooms and stuff, that's just important. I find that really valuable is like people who can be collaborative because I think that keeps the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And specifically with Justin, I was always just such a fan of Justin's works, of, of films he's directed, of sketches he's directed that I was in, of the stuff we would write together. And I felt like if I could, why not bring 
my friends. Um, and it was kind of funny because I was like only allowed two friends. WB was kind of like, can't hire all your, I was like, that's fine. Okay, I'll take two then. And then, uh, yeah, I'll fill the room with new people. But I think that's good too, because I didn't know half the people that were in the room. And I think it's also good to have people whose sensibilities you don't know to collaborate with, to help make new, I don't know, just think of things you never would have thought of really. So it was that mix of wanting to have the comfort of people who knew me and what I knew. I also knew that eventually there come a point when, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the writer's room all the, all the time, but with being, doing with the, what do you call it? Acting as well. Naturally, I would eventually be out of the room. So it felt good to have some people who knew me as well as people who, who were just funny and understood the show to combine those things and, and make a better show, especially for when I'm not there. And Brittany, you've written for Quinta before. So uh, what was it like when you saw that pilot? And you know, did you, did you immediately know that the, respond to it, know that this was, you could bring something to it? Well, I don't think I saw the pilot before I made it. I just read it. Um, which I think is even, it's even harder for something to come across well on the page than it is when you like get to actually see it fully fleshed out. Um, and it just was like a super strong pilot. I just was like, this is a good show. Uh, and I got into writing, wanted to write for Network. Like I had been watching Community and 30 Rock and The Office and Happy Endings. And so when I first came to LA, I thought, oh, my goal is to work for network. But the way that the shows on network uh, started heading, I was like, ah, that's not my goal anymore. Yeah. So it was like super refreshing to see a show that to me felt like the thing that made me want to become a television writer. And so it felt like this really cool moment that I got to return to the thing that uh, inspired me to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I have, you know, I went to under, underfunded Black public schools by, for a lot of my life. Um, and so it was really nice to see that on the page. And my stepmother's a teacher. So it just was a, I had a lot of connections to the material. And honestly, like the vibes were just right. I, I think I probably observed Quinta way more than she observed me uh, being the writer on set for a Black Lady Sketch Show. And from knowing Justin outside of uh comedy and just like as a friend uh I, I just knew that it was going to be a, a good working environment which is not always it's rarely something that you can feel confident about before you take a job and knowing that that was going to be the case honestly even if the pilot had been like fine I would have probably <laughs> taken it so it was a real a real boon it was a real plus that the, the work environment was going to be great and the pilot was incredible yeah, and pilots um, aren't always great out of the box. They take a lot of time sometimes to sort of build that world and characters. I just think that you happen to be lucky that everything seemed to be in place for this one. It, it was a really good, I want to say it was a really good sample, but you certainly didn't need a sample. <laughs> no, I think I knew I had to make a good one. I knew that the, I'd been through the process enough, specifically with CBS, where I was like, it cannot be kind of good. You can make a kind of good pilot if you're Chuck Lorre, but I could not. I had to make a good, it's true because he has a lot of skin in the game, but you know, I knew I had to make a good one that was like undeniable. And it's it was like a real conscious choice <laughs> to make a good network pilot, I think, to write a good one, yeah. And Joya, how did this come to you? Because again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think that this is your first staff writing job. I, I believe you came up through the, was it the Warner Brothers program? Yes, I worked in HR up until two weeks before I started the show. So um, I had just finished the WB Writers Workshop and I really wanted to meet on Abbott because I, I admired Quinta, Justin and Pat from afar without having ever, no one knew me. So I was completely on the outside, but I read the pilot and got, like I said, I went to Detroit Public School. So that resonated with me. And I think the most important part was that it was funny with hearts. So that was always something I hoped to be a part of. So it all just worked out. Wow. Uh, from the from a hiring standpoint, Quinta, I'm curious, did was it on the strength of her sample? Because I think it's really inspiring for newer writers to hear that, you know, sometimes you you don't have a long list of IMDB credits and you can still get the job. Yeah, it was the strength of Joyous sample. That's one. And two. 
we we interviewed quite a few people from the programs and I just felt like Joya, like I said, I did not, I didn't know Joya, but I felt that I'm trying to say things the right way, Quentin. Um, <laughs> Uh, Joya really stood out because she did not give us a story that we did not need in her interview. She literally said, I like, here's the comedy I'm inspired by. Here's the kind of comedy I'd like to be a part of. Her sample was good. It just, she just really showed us that like she was going to be a person that was going to come in and do the job. And, and that's what she did. And I think that's what we were looking for. I think a lot of, I, I think the programs are, are both very positive and very interesting because I think like it's, it's, it can be a toss up of what, you know, people are getting into the real writing world for the first time. But I really felt like Joya already felt seasoned a little bit and, and just gave us, just showed us that she was going to do, to do the job, which I thought was really great. And I really liked that about her. Joya, do you mind if I ask what your sample was, just out of curiosity? I don't know what you guys read, actually. We read, we read the shit, the Shit's Creek, uh, ah. um, what do you call it? Uh, spec. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I wrote a fire fest meets Shit's Creek spec. <laughs> that sounds amazing, because I'm sorry, I wasn't sure if people were still writing specs or if they were turning in original work um, for people to look at. And I, I don't know if there's a preference you know, when you're hiring staffers, sort of, sort of what you want to see. For me, yeah, a writing sample is always necessary. Um, specs are fine um, as long as it's good. I don't know what to say. It's no. like it. I think it should really just show. What I don't know what they're telling the people out there, but I love when they show like a unique approach to comedy or your voice. For instance, Jordan, I didn't read like Jordan's sample, but I had, um, I'd, I'd heard about the play and I'd, I'd like read some of the play because uh, Jermaine, I don't know if you knew that Jermaine, let me read the play. And I'm like, these are things that, I, this is a unique approach to comedy. And I find that really exciting. And I'm often just looking for something that's different from my direct appro approach, you know, like I feel like I already have my own voice. So I really want to hear what someone else is, what they're adding to the, you know, the pot of the show. Um, as I mentioned, I know this show is deeply personal to Quinta, um, but I'm curious, like, how many of your own stories and personal experiences have, have made it into the show? And we specifically have a question from D. Coleman, I believe, wants to know, where did the desking episode come from? Was that anyone's personal experience? So I guess I can tell. So that was, that was a one time last year that we had a, it was in an outline or a story um, say that we don't you know the, the network was like yeah we don't know if we love this story so it was the only time last year that we had a story thrown out and it was like okay got it we were fortunate because that didn't happen later in the process it happened earlier which is like good so I had seen these videos online on TikTok of kids stealing it was a trend they were stealing um things paper towel holders they were stealing them out of the bathrooms and it was just a trend they were doing. And all I could think about is this much, this must be making the teachers' lives hell. It's just a little thing that these kids think is they think it's so funny and such a good job. So I kind of came up with that and the room liked it. And I feel like after that, forgive me if I'm misremembering, they'll tell me, but like I feel like after that, we kind of came up with that idea like fast, that 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 story, I should say, of how that would go. And even though it was one of our least prepped episodes least thought out because like I thought of it on a whim and then we all built it out really fast that wound up being like the room's favorite because it was so yeah I think it was so fun and and at that point in the season we were at this place where we could play with the absurdity of our characters a little bit with this situation like it just wound up being such a fun physical and funny episode um yeah I don't know how other people can talk about it, but yeah. <laughs> Anyone else have a specific experience that that translated into the show? Well, I kind of have a weird one because like I was on set and I came back and there was a storyline kind of about me. <laughs> so 
like <laughs> everyone's making fun of my food choices or not choices which were are just a little sort of weird but I but and then I was on set and I came back and there was that storyline about Gregory you know not eating pizza and that whole thing so I was like oh <laughs> so and then we got to hear about how strange that was from the network and how you know, <laughs> I would like someone like that basically <laughs> you leave the room for a minute and they write about you yeah yeah it was amazing <laughs> who, is anyone here responsible for the for incorporating that into the show yeah who is maybe they don't want to admit it <laughs> i think it was i think it was justin yeah it was probably justin halpern because halpern. he likes to make fun of me the most yeah. about it so. yeah <laughs> he said that's weird <laughs> that should be in the show yeah <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else think of any specific examples? Of things that we've said? And yeah, or that you brought specifically, you know, something that happened to you that ended up in the show. Uh, I think one time I just came in, and I was like, uh, it's Thursday, the sexiest day of the week. And yeah. Then oh, yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> and then we were all arguing for different days of the week, as well as, um, uh, talking about pizza, everyone were from different parts of the country. We were talking yeah. about what's the best pizza, Brittany, with her uh, de uh, lasagna disguised as deep dish. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago pizza. Pizza and, and Kate with the pizza from her home. Well, I'm from I'm from northeastern Pennsylvania, the pizza capital of the world. <laughs> old, old Forge Pizza, but they went ahead and put pictures of it. Uh, <laughs> We went on the website and it's I got, ro I'm still getting roasted for it. Amazing. It's good if you're ever in Northeastern Pennsylvania, Old Fort. I think something that wound up being inspiring was, it's a lot of stuff that's inspiring too. Like Joya told us, I think in your interview, maybe that your someone in your family was a janitor, a custodian. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. I'm hoping I was gonna say I'm hoping there are nothing. No, no, I know what it was, but I was inspired by Joya's someone in Joya's family has lived so many lives. And that's what was inspiring to me about Mr. Johnson. Like he has lived so many lives, but you he he's just at the school being a custodian. And yeah. so we're able to like fabricate these stories about Mr. Johnson that, that are true about his well, they're 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 true. Sorry, but we write them into his life. Uh, does anyone have a Tariq in their life? Because I've met that guy so many times. <laughs> um, I, not quite, a, I've dated, I've dated people like Tariq. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Hopefully for not as long, not as long as your character. <laughs> <laughs> no, not as long as Janine, but for, for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we have a question from Emily Ellis wants to know, are there any storylines left in the writer's room floor that you didn't get to, but wanted to, or maybe we'll see them in the future. I would say, yeah, right. Yeah. There are things that definitely. Oh, I mean, absolutely. With our first season, we only had 13 episodes and I feel like we came up with so much material and now it, we kind of get to explore or parts of storylines that we didn't get to explore last year that we'll get to explore this year. Um, and that's really exciting. 13 episodes of 22 minutes is only but so much. And I feel like we have so much backstory built for these characters and who they are and, and where they're from. And it feels exciting to be able to have some room to see some more of that this season. You also have this phenomenal cast. And I, I'm curious, how much do the actors end up affecting the final scripts? For, for, for the writers, do you find yourself, you know, writing more as you get to know the actor and the, the character? Um, you know, for someone like Mr. Johnson, you could just create anything and I'll believe it. But <laughs> some of these other people have clearly very rich backstories. And I don't know if that comes from, you know, that was always the plan or something that the actor brought to it that that made you want to want to write that for them the actors definitely bring a ton but i will say that when we first started the room up um 
I just, I just felt like the pilot had set so much up already and the characters were so clear that it was like, you know, a lot of times you get on shows and you're figuring it out when you get in because it's not, it's, they just did the pilot. They didn't really think of the rest. And Quinta had just, you know, it was all there for the future. And so when we got in, we took a whole day for each character to talk about each character. And Justin and Pat would just ask Quinta questions about each character. And Quinta had an answer for everything and like a very detailed one. And so we were just so clear on these characters. And I think that's why the show, you know, was so good so fast, like, because it was just all there for it. These characters were just there. And so that was just like an amazing experience. And then, you know, as we start shooting the show and we get on set and we start, you know, working with the actors and stuff, they bring that much more to it. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun to uh, to now see like what each actor's strengths are, like what they're very good at or very funny at. Uh, and so that's been kind of fun to write towards, knowing that writing something and being like, I don't have to necessarily over explain this because they can create this idea with or like, get to the point with just a look or in their delivery or something. So that's, that's been really cool. We have quite a few people asking about, you know, some of these, uh, what, what, what sound like ad libs, especially from the janitor. Um, is there room for improv on the set? Yeah, sure. But we, I think that we, I don't know. I like to constantly give our writers room credit that I think this room does such a good job that the actors are not relying on it. And I do, I mean, I've heard our actors tell, say that on panels and stuff like, and they're, they like not having to, you know, uh, come in and figure out what to say and figure out how to improvise. But we try to make sure that this stuff is super tight before it gets to them. And if improv happens, that's just an, a bonus, right? Of course, cause you can on set and you find some more stuff that's natural, but, um, I really think the room does a good job of having it there to them and not making them feel like they have to. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think people assume actors love improv and not all of them do. <laughs> There's no. also a writer on set uh, for every yeah. episode. Yeah, so like if, if there's stuff, something not working or something like that or whatever, the, um, the writer is there to, to have alts or whatever for their episode. Yeah. yeah, and I think that we've built a good enough, strong enough relationship with the actors that, you know, if there is something that they want to flag for us, rather than just being like, I'm just going to improvise it, they'll take a beat before we get into the scene and say like, hey, do you maybe have an alt for this? Or are you okay if I like just change the wording so that it feels better coming yeah. out? And, yeah. and, and that's because, you know, they respect us and we respect them. And when you have that sort of good foundation, people don't feel like they have to just go off the wall and come up with something on their own. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I will say like in a mockumentary, you know, the camera is doing like, the camera is doing a lot of specific moves based on lines. And it, it does require them to be a little bit nimble, but they also have markers based on lines, based on, you kind of want to keep it tight so that they can do their jobs well too. And um, I think it's just, helpful and and you know we have to let we have to let like sound know you know when a line is added so they can be over there to catch it they're moving a mic around also that can't get caught on camera so there's a lot of different moving pieces that's like as tight as we can be that's great but we also need to communicate with a bunch of different people when something is changing so and i think the actors respect that too they know that the cameramen and um sound guys are doing very specific movements Annuity guys too, you have to let them know so that when they mark every take and whatnot. Uh, we have a question from someone with a great name, Jackson Hannibal Deloach, uh, wants to know, is Zach Fox writing his own raps and jingles or are those written in the room? And if so, who's the best rapper in the room? Uh -huh. <laughs> he is not writing his own. Those raps are, I would say, primar primarily written by Brittany. <laughs> really? I mean, yeah, we have like a super collaborative room where we know what we want him to say. And then Brittany has, has, is very good at writing like mm -hmm. rhyming songs, man, rap. And um, 
but we we he no i mean not even zach is coming to zach is interesting because zach is a rapper and is fully capable but zach is not in our writer's room you know zach is hired as an actor on abbott elementary and then he brings so much to what is there and like Brittany and like you know Brittany just said before he may talk to one of us and say hey can I switch this up a little bit to help fit me a little me a little bit more my cadence a little bit more um add this part in but no I, I personally find it really irresponsible to have an actor show up and be like just do some stuff that's wild <laughs> it does not make people's jobs easier across the board so no the the room is uh response it, I, I'm am like so amazed with being able to be a room that writes good enough stuff for a chaotic agent like Zach Fox. <laughs> and, I cannot take credit for if somebody give want to give you drugs, punch them in the face, wherever that line was. That that was not me. Was that Zach, or did we write that, or did he add that one in? Oh, uh, that was him. <laughs> yeah, there was some stuff that got added in. Like it's it's a. And I will also say we have a super collaborative room. Like a lot of the shit that comes out of our mouths is like, okay, what's the craziest thing? The line, uh, if I, Tariq Temple, and I know that was Jordan because that's Jordan's last name. <laughs> like, it's like, we can plug a lot of craziness as a room into Zach's mouth. <laughs> How does it sort of work with breaking down? I, I assume you break stories in a main room and then you sort of, I don't know if you pick which ones you write. Um, I'm thinking specifically of, of one episode that spoke very personally to me was the gifted episode. Because <laughs> yeah. I remember all the problems that those gifted programs caused. And, and Jordan, I believe you were the writer on that one. Um, was that something that that you know you originally pitched, or did you sort of, I don't know, I don't want to say got assigned or or selected or, or really was passionate about? I feel like that might have been in my interview or something or one of the early days I pitched. I, I think like that was always something I, you know, I kind of had an experience of like not getting into a gifted program quite. And my brother is a math teacher at a private school. So I always felt like some kind of there's always that kind of conversation, I think, in the ether that I wanted to speak to directly and like together making it something that was a real uh point of contention we saw for the first time between janine and gregory and seeing how they represented two of those ideas and how that tracked through the story to be able to speak to something larger but also i think like very grounded and obviously ending with the the kind of uh kind of mythical creature you know joking uh kind of Sun Ra energy of Mr. Johnson having the gifted custodial student you know just to make it like anything's giftedness and speaking to you know multiple intelligences kind of thing was was nice to be able to, to yeah write. yeah it's such a great idea and the show handles tones so well like sometimes I feel almost guilty for laughing at these things I'm not sure I should be because <laughs> they're so real um, I'm very curious what the actual writer's room is like I mean I'm sure you're all professional and serious but is it as fun as the show ends up being yes I think we <laughs> um I think we have a good Okay, here's another thing that I just feel like helps other people will disagree. We have a room of, of people, like especially our producers, me, Justin, Pat, who like our families and we actually like the people in our, we want to go home and we want to be, get, we, we like good working hours. So our room starts at 10 and most days it'll end at 3.30 or four. Like we kind of get pissy if we're there till five. Like, <laughs> <it's> like <laughs> <laughs> and it's, and I believe that that helps keep, and I don't know, writers, you can speak to it, but I hope that, I think that helps to keep a nice energy, you know, it's nice to like come in and say, we're going to be here for this time. And, and we get a lot of good work out that way. Like we, we feel good with our work hours. And so that keeps us lighter and fresher and able to put out good work. And um, we don't have like a very serious writer's room, not at all, but we respect the world that we are writing about. I will say that that was another thing in the hiring process. 
it was really important to me that everyone respected this world. I didn't want people to write on the show who had a negative take on teachers or who had a cartoon take on teachers or a um, demeaning look at public schools. They understood the beauty and respected the world we were writing about. And I think that natural respect for the subject matter really made a healthy environment. And so we get to laugh, we get to talk about tougher things and still respect each other's opinions on it. Um, but but that's I feel cocky saying that because my room I feel like the writers should I'm shut up I feel like the writers well, should <laughs> we we have fun and we socialize and I would say we don't jerk off but I feel like that's the difference between like fun rooms and our rooms it's like you'll hear about some rooms and they're like yeah and then we played rock band for three hours and like <laughs> yeah we do not do that we have <laughs> I mean Kate has a running bit right now where if we re reference anything or bring up a video that we want to be like, it's sort of like this, or it rem reminds me of this, and Kate will just go, should we watch it? And 98% of the time, the answer is no, because we're not a jerk off room. You're just going to have to watch it on your own time. It is my favorite quote from 30 Rock. She says it real quick. Everyone <laughs> knows that it is a joke from 30 Rock, but sometimes it works and we actually get to watch it. But Sometimes, but usually if it's beneficial for what... Yeah we are doing but, but the joke is being as annoying as possible about it and eventually one day they will be worn down yeah <laughs> but it's also usually when kate is saying that and it'll be like something during the time when we have watched something is something we've already watched 30 times it's yes a very specific joke or yes. internet reference so we watch it real quick the same thing we watched 29 yes. times yes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's another episode or actually a moment in an episode I want to talk about and that is I mean Justin I believe that you wrote this one maybe perhaps with Quinta um, but it's when Tyler's character Gregory has to loosen up and he ends up dancing in, in front of his class <laughs> and again I'm sort of curious how that developed in the writer's room if you always knew that that was how it would end or if that was something that like sort of came to you as uh, organically as the episode was being written. Oh yeah um so yeah, you're referring to the and work family when um, Gregory has to like let loose and dance to um, Tariq's song. Uh, yeah, I think there are like a couple um, pitches um, in the outline. Um, and I think in some of the versions there was like talking and dialogue over, um, or when Gregory was going through this moment and, and finally, finally like kind of letting loose and just dancing. I before I went off to, to script to write, um, I really wanted that scene to just not have any talking and I wanted it to be completely visual um, just so that Gregory could have that moment um, of 20 seconds of just like kind of dancing. I think in the background you hear Tariq rapping, you hear him like say funny things, but really there's no real dialogue. Um, and um, that was something that, uh, yeah, I, I, I just wanted to do, um, but well, what was your question? <laughs> well, I'm just not curious if, like, did, did Tyler know that he was going to have to dance in that episode? Yeah. Um, or did yeah. he get the script and learn it? Well, he, um, we didn't, I mean, he chose his own dance. We didn't. Yeah. <laughs> he found out when he got the script though, like our actors find out at table read, um, what they'll have to do. That's an, I think that was an interesting one because we all, once again, we have a collaborative room, we all throw stuff in there and then the writer gets to put that and, you know, put it together and be, you know, creative in how that's put together after like reading the outline and everything and putting it in script form. But Tyler, he made us aware of how many, he kept addressing it as hairpin turns for him as an actor. And at first, like, I didn't, I was like, dude, just like, do the thing. But actually, he, he was, he's such a good actor and so never has a problem with anything. And it's not that he had a problem with this. He just was like, I need to, he kept talking to me and Justin about like, I need to understand the hairpin turns that I'm making in this. So we heard him out on that. And it was like, wow, he is making, like Gregory goes from uh, having a hard time teaching his class to dealing with dad stuff to dealing with Janine stuff to making this big turn at the end and it made us more aware so that was a I think an interesting point for us to kind of talk him through hey here's where your character is going in the future and here's where your character has been in the past 
and kind of realizing that we had to give our actor a little bit more information for him to perform his job well in that moment. And it was so funny that that became like one of the more defining moments for people who watch the show, because I think that one required a lot of work from everyone involved, even Jay, the director of that episode. There was so much communication between Jay and Justin and us and like making sure this worked for everyone. And, and it was one of those things where it was like, ooh, is this too hard? And it wound up becoming a very <laughs> defining episode. Justin, I know Tyler went out, out of his way to say that you were very generous with your time because he asked you a lot of questions and and you really spent time with him. I don't know if that's you know unusual um, when you write a script or if, if you're more than happy to give that time to an actor. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. It was my first time <laughs> on set. So I mean, that was your first time on set? Um, well, as a writer, yeah. Wow. Amazing. Um, actually, we have a lot of questions coming in sort of for uh, about breaking in. And, and so, Joya, I hope you don't mind. Um, but because this is your, your first staff writing job, um, uh, and, and again, feel free to tell me if this is like if you don't want to talk about this. But I'm curious, did, did you have many other interviews? And, and is there a way that you feel that like you could make a good impression in that room? Obviously, you did in this case, you know, but were there any other rooms where you felt maybe it didn't go as well? And, and what, what did you learn from that? I had a couple of other uh, shows that I interviewed on, and I think it's important to always be yourself because I think with when I met with Quinta, like, I'm not the most enthusiastic person normally, so I'm just going to give you this kind of Daria-like energy, but I think if you're faking like, oh, I love school and I am and like, and then I would show up, <laughs> if I showed up in the room just like, there, there would be a problem. So I think definitely just uh, be yourself. Um, you'll end up where you're supposed to be. So I got rejected from another room and that show is now off the air, it got canceled. So I think um, <laughs> I'm happy, I'm so blessed to be where I am. And I think I, I have a really goofy tattoo on my arm that says persistence, but that's something I live by, persistence is key. So just, if you're trying to make it, just keep trying and hopefully it'll happen for you. And actually, I, I wanted to point out that I believe a couple of the uh, uh, episode scripts are in the WJ library now, because um, I would actually love to read, uh, you know, like like we were just talking about the episode with, with Tyler dancing. I would love to read how that was written out. You know, I imagine it doesn't just say he dances. <laughs> I always think it's so fascinating to to learn the, uh, the for lack of a better word, stage directions. Yeah, um, definitely. So we're really out of time, which is a bummer because there's so many questions. Um, I've never seen people, honestly, this this passionate about a show. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you all so much for being here. And thank you really, really for, for such a fantastic show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And thank you. Thanks, thanks, everybody, for watching and coming to this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for watching the show.